We've made it our mission to monitor our changing climate and global sea level rise is unfolding at a shocking rate. Now a new report from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration shows the U.S. and in turn the Bay Area will be caught in the middle. The report predicts the sea level along the U.S. coastline will rise by 10 to 12 inches on average over the next 30 years. That rise will be equal to what was recorded over the last 100 years. So what does this mean for us? NOAA says high tide and storm surge heights will increase and push further inland. That means coastal flooding could become more common over the next few decades. They predict by 2050 moderate damaging floods are expected to happen more than 10 times as much as today. Now we know what you're thinking here. 10 to 12 inches doesn't seem like that much, but it really does add up and an increase of seven feet in the next century will wipe out a lot of the coastline that we love right here in the Bay Area. Let's take a deeper dive. Take a look at this map. This is what the coastline looks like right now, but here's what it will look like in 2050. Also in St. Pete, you can see water rising up right around Derby Lane, the old Greyhound racing track, and of course, parts of Gandy Boulevard. You see that there. Also in Tampa, water is rising up around the edges of McDill Air Force Base, and some of the Bay Palms golf course is underwater, as you see there on the map. And here's what a seven foot rise would leave us at the end of the century. In St. Pete, people in Pinellas Park would have waterfront property. Think about that. And also in Tampa, McDill would be washed away, and that is including U.S. Central Command. Also downtown Davis Island and much of the Riverwalk would be washed away. Now, it is important to remember that is a worst case scenario, but like Noah said, a possible one if we don't curb emissions. But not all hope is lost. We want to bring in meteorologist Natalie Ferrari. Natalie, NOAA says current and future emissions play a big role in sea level rise. That's absolutely right. So the fewer emissions, the less likely sea level rise will grow at the rate it is now because that's truly the problem, the rate of growth when it comes to sea level rise and even our warming temperatures. Right now they predict about two feet of rise by 2100. But NOAA says failing to curb those emissions could cause levels to rise by three and a half to seven feet. Wow by the end of the century. Again, on the very small scheme of things, that doesn't sound like very much, but when you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of years, this is significant for our future generations to come. So let's get to the big board. I want to talk more about curbing those emissions because we've mentioned in our several, several uh, segments when it comes to climate change and curbing that emission is the fact that we're looking at over three degree rise from 1970 to 2020. So we're trying to get that graphic up for you. Here it is. And basically, if we continue to see that kind of warming, that will not only allow for those greenhouse gases to continue to trap more warmth, but also for those rising sea levels. If we can kind of bring some significant cuts into the Sunshine State, this would at least curb that growth curb, just the significant changes that are forecast to come because of our warming circumstances. So this is, if you're a visual person, Person like me, this really helps you see how if we basically do nothing with lowering those emissions, that rise will just continue to steadily go higher and higher. Here at home today, we got pretty close to near normal temperatures, but I'm going to talk more about a warming trend on the way this week, as well as some possible rain chances.